Merry Christmas to all, but a not so merry Nixmas for the orange and blue, man. Knicks shoot out the gates hot to kick off this matinee matchup against the Sixers, man. Julius has it cooking. Mitch putting in work. Jalen cooking. Distributing. RJ having his moments. Grimes, everybody, man. But it was a tale of two halves as the Sixers superstars woke up and got some much needed help from their supporting cast. Nick's not so much, man. And that was all she wrote. Sixers run away with things in the second half and uh, beat the Knicks, man. Win the Christmas Day matinee matchup 119 to 112. Started off well. Certainly started off well, man. He had to have liked how uh, Julius was getting it going. It was smooth. The game was coming to him, knocking down shots. He was hot from three, putting the ball on the floor, creating for himself. Just absolutely excellent. Brunson, over uh, over 10 assists, cooking out there. He had Mitch, excellent effort on, on Embiid in the first half, getting after it on the offensive glass. But um, as I said, man, second half, uh, things changed. And then the fourth quarter, it was all Sixers. James Harden started pouring it on. George's Niang, 4-9 from downtown. And the turning point of this game, man, as the Knicks were clinging to a to a two-point lead in this thing. The Sixers would get the edge and and basically turn the tables. Turn the tables, man. Going a 16 to 2 run in crunch time. And that was a knockout blow, man. I think, you know, today's game, it, there's a few things. It, it illustrates how tough the Chicago game was. Because I thought, you know, if they that game was important to protect yourselves for this, you know, outstanding matchup. Yeah. First game of a Christmas slate and, and against a very good team. So you wanted to at least give your chance to have a decent week. Um, and, you know, they, they, they go out and, and they, they blow it again. Um, a few concerns, you know, the bench didn't play well today, Facts. but they also didn't play a lot. And so, you know, you start to ask, you know, is this a personnel thing? Do you need to add a shot creator off the bench? Um, or do you need to just play a few of those guys more minutes and, and just have a little bit more trust and see if things develop that way? Uh, because, you know, Sims, Hartenstein, McBride only played six minutes today. I, I didn't understand that myself, especially when, you know, you, you want to play some defense against this Sixers team who shoots the ball well from three. You know, the Philadelphia 76ers going into today were fourth in the league in three-point percentage uh, at 38.3%. So you want to have guys that can rotate, uh, that can defend. So I didn't understand that. Uh, but, you know, overall, it's just a tough loss. Yeah. And they started well. They had 37 points in the first quarter. You know, I, I I thought the way they started was very impressive. Uh, you saw in the on the mic'd up on ESPN, uh, Tibbs in the early first quarter was imploring the team to continue the pace. Yeah. You know, saying the more we play with pace, the better it is. And they continue to do that uh, with a 37, uh, 37 point first quarter. So I thought yeah. that was positive, but. Oh, it's just frustrating. frustrating. Just frustration. You win eight in a row. Now you lose three in a row. So we're back to trying to figure out what's the, you know, where is this team? Um, and it also looks like lately, CP, the rotations, although it's nine, it's starting to creep up more to like seven. Yeah. Or I don't yeah. know what, because it looks like it's know, wearing on them a little bit, man. The starters are playing, you know, almost 40 minutes every game now. So, yeah. Are these guys a little bit of fatigue? Because you see, again, late in the fourth, these guys are running out of gas. gas. And you see the shots are short. So is it personnel? Is it, like, fatigue? Like, yeah, just frustrating. Hey, Merry Christmas, y'all. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. Trying. <laughs> uh, real quick, man, I really think that uh, Tom Thibodeau's rotation is starting to take a toll on our starters, uh, especially Brunson. You know, we rely on Brunson to do a lot of the initiating on offense. 
you know, his defense didn't look too good today. Uh, he was uh, leaving his guy open for a couple of threes. I think the same is happening to Grimes as well, mm -hmm. uh, especially coming off that ankle injury. He just looks a little slow on rotations lately. Yeah. I think that killed us. Uh, shout out Mitch, man. He tried. He was playing pretty well in the first half, but, mm -hmm. you know, once Joel and B got it going, once he got those free throws to go, once he saw the ball going in the hoop, I knew it was over, man. But, hey, be safe, y'all. Merry Christmas. You too, bro. I'm Rocky. Um, You know, I feel like the eight-game winning streak kind of got fans kind of, um, you know, emotional again and in their feelings and not – Realizing what this team is, we live in we live in a a mean reversion type world where we're gonna always revert back to the mean over time. We know what this team is. We know it's a a 500 team. Um, so um, overall, I'm not too like. Listen, I would have loved to win today, I guess, but it's not a big deal. Um, the two things I want to talk about real quick is number one, uh, Tibbs, man. Listen, man, you got to make adjustments. Listen, if we're trying to win in the playoffs, you got to make adjustments as a coach, dude. All right, and like. The only adjustment I saw from Tibbs was basically giving the ball to Randall and having him do iso ball at the top of the key. Like, in the second half, when he was playing so well within the offense, like J.D. was saying in the first half, they did, they went away from that and just played hero ball. And then I don't understand how you're a coach and you can't beat a freaking zone. Hmm. Like, this is the NBA. How can't you beat a zone, all right? It's not the first time this happened. It's happened a million times. If you're trying to win in the playoffs, you need to make adjustments. And number two is R.J. Barrett. Listen, obviously he didn't have a good game today, but he's been playing a lot better lately. Um, we don't need him to be an all-star. We don't even need him to be a, we don't need him to be a superstar all-star. We just need him to be a good player to play up to his contract or relatively up to his contract. But he's where the ceiling of the Knicks is, man. If, if R.J. Barrett's going to play like an all-star and then put up, you know, 25 and 5 and 5 or whatever, then this, this team could, could, could be good. If he's going to play like how he is today and shoot us out of the game, go 6 for 21, the team's not going to be good. Um, and the last thing is Jalen Brunson, man. He's a great player. I, I, I love Jalen Brunson. I actually voted for the All-Star game. But teams, especially lately, because he's been playing well, especially in Toronto, they put a lot of length on him. Mm -hmm. right? today, they were, today they were blitzing him, and they took him out of the game. If we're trying to win now, which everyone's trying to do, and we're trying to make the playoffs, which everyone's trying to do, right? who's going to be the other guy to help out Brunson down the stretch when it's time to get a bucket? Because you put some 6-6 six, six wing on him, 6-7 wing on him, you blitz him. Someone else is going to have to do it. Randall can't close. You know, RJ's up and down. Who's going to be the other guy, man? Um, you know, so that that's my take, man. Yeah. You know, Good points. it is what it is. Good point. Happy holidays. JD, Merry Christmas, bro. Enjoy the rest of the day with the fam. Tough loss, 119-112. Uh, we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Tuesday. Knicks versus Mavs, man. JD, good show, bro. Yeah.